it feels like I'm holding my personality and my future life in my hands right now. Hey there guys and welcome back to Unjaded Jade. Today's video, my god, I was so kindly gifted a DNA test but not just any DNA test, the world's most comprehensive DNA test. This video is very kindly sponsored by Circle DNA and they have created the most incredible way of understanding yourself through your genetics. As someone who is fascinated by genetics and biology and is also fascinated with understanding myself as a person, this is the dream. This is the dream video. One reason I'm especially interested to have a DNA test is because my dad is adopted. So we really don't know that much about his genetics or his side of the family. And my parents also have some health issues. So it's just interesting to see if I also am predisposed to those and if I'm a carrier for certain diseases and can pass them on to my kids. Like it's kind of terrifying. It feels like I've just been given a ticket to look into the future. Like what would I do if I found out that I am a carrier for so many diseases. That's so hard to tell a future partner or thinking about if I want kids, like scary. <laughs> in the first half of today's video, I'm gonna dig into my DNA and the results of this test. But then I'm also going to answer some of your questions from my Instagram, which are get to know me questions. But go ahead, grab a cute cup of tea, settle in, and I'm so excited you're here. Let's flash back to when I took the test. <laughs> I cannot tell you how excited me and my family are for me to do this. Like, I'm a biology nerd. This is insane. I get to sequence my exome. Circle premium. Wow. <sighs> ah, this is so exciting. Ready to go. Okay, I'm opening the DNA report. Oh my God, this is so detailed. Ah, this is insane. Do you know what? I'm gonna jump straight to something I've been interested in my whole life, which is my ancestry composition. Oh my God. Okay, loading. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, it's so interesting. 92% European, kind of makes sense. But Eastern European, 34% Northwestern, 8% Southern European, Northern European, Southeast Asian. Oh my God, I'm 1.34% Vietnamese, really? That's interesting that I'm only 5% Indonesian. I really thought I'd be more Indonesian because my mum's mum is from Indonesia. She moved to the Netherlands when she was five. My mum's Dutch, but wow. So my dad's side of the family is probably more from Eastern Europe. That's so interesting. I wish it could be more detailed in the countries. South Asian 0.84%, that's so cool. Oh my God, I'm a part Chinese. That's so interesting. Ooh, but not Han Chinese, the Northern minority. That's so cool. I'm gonna look into that. That's awesome. Ah, oh, and unfortunately 0% African and 0% Middle Eastern. Wow. Oh my God, I can't wait to text my really close friend from Vietnam that I'm 1.34% Vietnamese. I feel so proud. <laughs> music and dance. Okay, that makes sense. Dancing and musical ability, normal. Which I think is a kind way of saying I can't dance and I am okay with that. <laughs> oh my God, diet, okay. The, I swear the loading is so scary. Oh, optimal diet type is a healthy balance. I thought like that would be everyone, but. Okay, my whole life I have said that I am a lightweight when it comes to alcohol. But apparently, genetically, I have normal sensitivity. So maybe it's not an excuse for me to just say I'm a lightweight. Interesting. Celiac predisposition. I've always wondered if I'm intolerant to gluten. Like it's fine, I can eat it, but sometimes I do just feel a bit worse when I've had gluten. Apparently I have higher sensitivity, higher predisposition for celiac. Still gonna eat gluten, but that's good to know. Well, I love this app because it tells you recommendations based off of what your genetics say. And I also love this because it tells you the science. Like it literally tells you the exact genes that they have tested and how confident they are in the score. That's also really good that the underlying research is from multiple populations. So East Asians, Caucasians, other races. There's a huge issue within science where they only have what are called weird samples. Let me try to remember what that sounds for. Western, educated, industrialized, rich and democratic. That's specifically more for psychology and neuroscience, but yeah, it's the idea that a lot of scientific research it hasn't been done on a wide population of people. And then we're trying to extrapolate these tests to everyone. And obviously that's not gonna be that accurate. So that's really cool. I wanna dig more into the science behind how they get these results. High spice sensitivity makes sense. I am a basic white girl. <laughs> Stress tolerance. I am apparently a warrior, not a warrior, not a neutralist, a warrior. I have a strong sense of calm when faced with obstacles. I think this makes so much sense of why I just load, load things into my life, take on too many projects and stuff because apparently I can cope with the stress. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing. No, my genetics would say I'm a night owl, even though I think I'm a morning person. That's really interesting. Obviously so many of these are also determined by your environment, 
the how you're raised, people in your life, lifestyle choices. A lot of them also tell you, oh, this is 30% influenced by genetics, 60% influenced by genetics. I have a high acne risk. I have really struggled to get rid of the acne on the side of my face. When I went vegan and stopped having milk, that really helped clear it up. High tendency for cellulite formation. That makes a lot of sense. Not low, not average, high. <laughs> we own the cellulite. <laughs> success traits. Discover how your genes influence your success. My IQ is very average, as expected. Emotional IQ, normal. Not gonna lie, I'm a little bit offended by this because I feel like I get people, but it's okay, we'll live with it. <laughs> oh, interesting. Research shows that genetic factors account for 10% of an individual's emotional IQ. Confidence score of two. I'm an emotional Pisces. I empathize too much. <laughs> Entrepreneurship tendency, normal. Okay, well, apparently not going into business, am I? Creativity, excellent. Oh, I'll take it, thank you. That's really interesting, actually, because Growing up, I never never really thought of myself as a creative person. 20 to 40% of an individual's educational attainment is influenced by genetics. Language ability, excellent. Ooh, we'll take it. One of the questions I was gonna answer later is, what languages do you wanna learn in your life? And I really, really, really want to be fluent one day in French, German, and Dutch. That's so hard, but I really, I would just love that. Memory skills normal. Well, I did all right at school, so I guess this just shows hard work <laughs> matters more than just your natural intelligence. If you say, oh, well, I'm just naturally painfully average. Well, let me tell you, if you're painfully average, you can find the right systems to work for you to do better. <laughs> I'm going to send it to my mum and dad and be like, mum, dad, your genes are average. Wow, it is just personality traits. That's so cool. Agreeableness. I am likely compassionate or helpful. That's kind. I think in the last two years since I've gone to uni especially, I've been really questioning, am I an extrovert or am I an introvert? I know that it's a spectrum. You're not one or the other, you can be both. But I love people, I love talking to people, I get energy from people. I just don't feel as myself as when I'm just alone. <laughs> I love being alone, I love introspection. And my genetics say that I am balanced between reserved and reflective and energetic and outgoing. That's very me. Neuroticism, balanced. That makes sense too. I'm in between sensitive and concerned and confident and calm, both. <laughs> Breast size, likely average. Thrill seeking, less likely a thrill seeker. Now that makes sense. I think naturally I just love routine. I get anxious when I think too much about like scary stuff and going out of my comfort zone. But at the same time, I love doing it. I'm not naturally a thrill seeker, but I make myself one. Okay, I have decided not to share my family planning and disease risk because it's kind of personal, but apparently I am a carrier for some things, which is, you know, that's interesting to know. But I'm very grateful to say I have average cancer risks and average dementia and brain health. This is incredible. I, I can't even explain how and or I am right now. Like, I'm gonna spend so long digging into all of these and reading the recommendations. The way I'm gonna change my lifestyle is I really need to be careful with eating healthily and exercising a lot. Otherwise, for example, I could very easily get type two diabetes or really bad cholesterol, really high blood pressure issues, heart attacks, a bunch of stuff. It's also really interesting to read because I think my parents should read some of this and I think it'll explain a lot of things we've been going through as a family. I can't express how grateful I am that I got to take this test. It is very pricey, I'm not gonna lie to you, not a cheap test, but if you are interested, you can get 33% off with my code. Here it is and the link is in my description. This is only valid for one week after today's video so if you are interested in either this DNA option or a cheaper less detailed one, for example you want to know about your ancestry, then you can go do that. I think it's also really important to say that you are not your genetics. You are not just everything that is in this. So much of who you are in your life is shaped by your environment, the people you're around, your mindset, your choices. It's not worth saying, oh I'm not going to amount to much because my genetics say I'm average in most things. Or, oh I should stop trying because oh I have such a high health risk for so many different things that you know I'm gonna die early like at the end of the day you still choose who you are and how you want to operate in life your genetics are only half of it <laughs> okay rapid fire I'm gonna answer some of the get to know me questions that you guys asked have you ever been in love <laughs> are you happy with your life it dawns on me often how lucky I am I'm so lucky in the fact I got to do a DNA test because a company offered it to me to do it for free, like I'm so lucky. I study at university I love, I have so many friends that I love, I love my life. Obviously it doesn't mean I'm happy all the time at all. And even if you achieved whatever you deem as a perfect life, 
you're human and humans get sad because emotions are just normal. But yes, I'm happy. What's your love language? Um, my top love language, it's between quality time and words of affirmation. But I think words of affirmation, just more. Words mean a lot to me. And also, you know, when you're spending time with people and they don't go on their phone and they're really present, that means a lot. Do you think Pride Month is important? So important. Do I think rainbow washing is necessary where every single thing becomes a rainbow regardless of whether companies are actually doing stuff for the LGBTQ plus community or not? No. But just because I live somewhere like England where LGBTQ plus people have a lot more rights, you only have to look at the statistics around the world, the hate crimes, the abuse, to know that it is absolutely necessary. So yes, I think it's important. I also just think it makes people feel validated in who they are. How old were you when you had your first kiss? 16 or 17? 17, I think. It felt like it took me forever, but then once it happened, I was like, oh, why was I trying so hard for that to happen, you know? Like just when it happens, it happens, don't rush it. Do you see yourself as a very independent person? You seem like it. I actually think I'm chronically independent sometimes not in a positive way. I just love this idea that I can be totally self-sufficient and if I'm feeling down, I can be the one to make myself feel better and oh, I'm gonna survive, I can operate in a city and I can do it all myself and I'll be fine and I can go out my comfort zone and I can do that on my own. But I've been really learning how to let people into my life, how to share things, how to realize that independence is good and important, but humans are meant to be dependent on one another and leaning on community, on friends and family doesn't make you weak. It's actually amazing and should be celebrated. Do you ever struggle with being so positive all the time? I don't think I'm positive all the time. I think I do have like a naturally positive mindset, I guess. One which, yeah, I guess takes practice and work, especially when sometimes the world just feels like it's gonna end. But I also think I'm very honest with myself and when I feel really down, I just, I feel it. Like I just, I sit in it um, or I do yoga and like feel it more. I don't think I'm toxically positive with myself and I try not to be with the internet either. Although I can see how it could come across that like I'm always perfect and living this great life just because you do see the snippets that I feel like I want to share, which is generally happy moments. Balancing healthy relationships and conventional success without getting too distracted. This is, oh my God, this is huge. To achieve modern day success, to, to do anything within the amazing hustle culture, they want you to sacrifice your free time and to make your hobbies and your free time your work. And I've had that so many times with YouTube, often at the heights of my YouTube online career where I get the most views, where I post the most, my relationships suffer the most because I'm spending all my time thinking about this online world and editing. And then often when it's doing the worst is when I'm truly the happiest because I'm investing so much in the people in my life. And it's such a hard balance to draw. I think it comes back to priorities whatever your priority is in that moment. I don't think it's bad if that's work sometimes because you deserve to build your dreams. And if certain people hinder that or are toxic in your life, then it's okay to give them less energy. The people who are amazing and support you, just don't forget about them as you work hard for whatever you want to do. Make time for them, schedule time for them. Okay, I'm gonna ask just one more question because I've talked forever. <laughs> what is a quote you saw and it changed your life? The one that comes to mind is by E.B. White. If the world were merely challenging, it would be easy. If the world were merely beautiful, it would be fine. But instead I arise each day torn between whether to enjoy the world or improve it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got to know me a little bit more. I definitely got to know myself more. <laughs> Check out Circle DNA if you're interested and have an amazing rest of your day. Sending you so much love. Bye.